The main problem that has arisen over the years with this design, I would say for me, living in, um, living in a maritime climate with a lot of rain and a certain amount of um, stuff going wrong that causes damage and, and general issues is that the magnets themselves, the, ferret, the neodymium magnets turned out not to be terribly robust. Um, the, I, I knew from experience that the ferrite magnets, um, they could fly off the machine, they could land in a ditch, you could fish them out weeks later, or months later, and put them back on the machine and they would work fine, even though they were broken and abused. Neodymium magnets are not like that. They're um, actually very vulnerable to corrosion. They're protected by a coating, which if you look after it really, really carefully, may may survive. Obviously, embedding them in a resin casting should help as well. Um, I'd recommend nowadays that you put some kind of on the steel disc because I think often the coating on the magnets gets damaged by abrasion with the steel disc. Um, and I'd recommend um, embedding them really carefully and putting a layer of resin and and uh, fiberglass on top of the magnet. Don't squeeze the resin dry on top of the magnet. Make sure it's really well protected because if that magnet rotor rub, rubs on the stator and the coating gets damaged or it gets damaged during assembly of the casting originally, sooner or later corrosion will start and that corrosion will cause the magnets to swell up and ultimately to rub on the stator and further damage. What I have found is that um, you can live with that damage just like you can with a rusty old car. You can paint the rust with oil um, rather than giving up immediately and replacing the magnet rotor, which is a pretty expensive component. I've learned that you can soak um, penetrating oil into the, into the rust. You can paint it with uh, linseed oil. You can cover the magnet rotor with grease and actually you can pretty much halt that corrosion process. So it's something that you can work with on a maintenance level um, if you manage to keep ahead of it. Uh, actually, you can get many, many years of successful operation out of a magnet rotor that's already started to corrode. But it also made me look back at ferrite technology. Ferrite magnets are a lot cheaper if you can buy them in sufficient numbers to overcome the, um, the rip-off uh, markups and transport costs. Um, and they're so cheap uh, if you buy them in quantity that you can, as you can see on the right, you can cover your magnet rotor with magnet material um, and to an extent compensate for the lower flux density that you get with a ferrite magnet. Um, so I've been working on that design for a few years now and I finally managed to produce a publication that's an ebook and a, and a print publication called the 2F design. I, rather than using a whole range of different sizes, I decided to focus on a popular 2 meter diameter. Um, I'm also working on 3F and 4F uh, versions of this, um, which are available for anyone who's interested in uh, building prototypes. Um, what you'll notice most about the stator here is the completely different coil shape that I'm using. Rather than attempting to make a coil where all of the flux from the magnet passes through the center. When you've got magnets so crowded together, the whole geometry changes and it becomes preferable to have a fairly small triangular hole in the middle of the coil and have uh, pack a lot more copper into the stator that way. And this design has proved to be very successful actually and I can get very good efficiencies in spite of using the lower tech ferrite magnets. Um, so built a few of these uh, ferrite magnet machines and um, the, uh, the field coil trials that field <laughs> field trials that we've done thing um, using amateurs and, and loggers uh, have proved the efficiency to be equal to the neodymium uh, ones in practice. I think this is partly because in some cases the neodymium ones can be too efficient and stop all the blades. It's very difficult to get a simple machine that has both good electrical efficiency and good blade efficiency because of the very different requirements for power speed curves that you get. So having a bit more loss in the electrons um, can actually enhance the blade performance. And so really having a super duper highly efficient, high field strength magnet isn't necessarily the way to go to get um, a cheap, easily built, reliable 
and overall efficient um, just as well as at turns out. The, the 2F design incidentally also uses a simpler construction technique that might be of interest. It's a bit tricky because it's it's rather different from the design of the recipe book and it's really a bad idea to try to teach people both designs. They get really, really confused. But I have been criticized for the uh, blade design having too many steps, being too complex, too involved, too many measurements, too time consuming. I can do it quickly. I think most people can learn to do it quickly. Um, to, to try to make the blade design process a bit quicker been persuaded to try a technique where you create both the, uh, the drop and the thickness in a single carving process. And uh, to do that, you have to make all your measurements from the back of the piece, actually, so it ends up the correct thickness. And I've also reduced the number of stations, so as to simplify it. And so far, my experience with using this blade carving process is that it does seem to be simpler to do and it does produce satisfactory results. So it's definitely worth looking at as an alternative for people who find the uh, blade carving prescription in the, um, in the recipe book too complex and involved and onerous. Here's a, a 3F machine that we built in Denmark and of course uh, actually lost in 2013 in the spring. And, um, and the, the three-meter ferrite machine also works pretty well. You basically just go up one size in the magnet rotor compared to the neodymium design. You can use very much similar um, construction for the frame of the machine, for the blades, etc. Um, but, uh, but you need to, to use the, these triangular coils. And um, yeah, uh, I would certainly recommend the ferrite magnets as a good way to go for building these sort of machines.